By now you may have noticed there are several different ways we can check equality in Scheme. So let's take some time to review the different ways we can check equality and then see some examples of those methods in action. So to check equality in Scheme, first off, the equal symbol checks that two numbers are equal. It only works for numeric types, but it works fine in that case. There's also the predicate EQ that checks that two names refer to the same object. So there are some things to consider when you're working with that, and we'll go into more detail later in the video. The equal predicate checks that two names refer to equivalent objects. And what's nice about equal is that it works for lists, pairs, strings, as well as numeric value. So let's see some code examples. If I just want to check that two numbers are equal, I can say equal. And so there you see three and three are equal, but nine and eight are not equal. I get false. I can also check to see that six is equal to two times three. And you can see that that's true. And also if I say six and the symbol six, notice that that also comes out to true as well, because symbols that are numeric evaluate to the result of the numeric symbol. But you have to be careful because the same doesn't hold for strings. So here's a string equivalent to six, and you can see that I get an error, a contract violation, because it expected a number and it was given the string six. So I'll copy those into my code. And notice I commented out this last one so that we wouldn't get an error when we tried to run the code. So the next one is we'll try the EQ predicate. So I can check to see, are one and one equal? Yes. Is the symbol two equal to the number two? Yes, just because again, those are numerically equal. How about one and one? That's false, but notice no error this time. Now, how about this? I'm gonna check to see if the symbol one is equal to the car of the list one, two, three. And notice that's true because the car of this list is one. Now, where are these different? Well, let's put some definitions up here. So you can see that I've defined list X and list Y, and they're both the same list. Now, if I run this, are list X and list Y equal? They're not. What if I define the empty list? How about equal empty list? And I misspelled that. So I need to run this first so that we load it. And you can see that that is true. And that's because there's only one copy of the empty list. Whenever you refer to the empty list, you're always referring to the same object in memory. Now for other different types of comparisons, so for example, if you want to compare two numbers or two strings, a lot of times that depends on the specific implementation. We already saw that numbers work okay. What if we do something like this? And you can see that that's false because this is a string literal and then this generates a string, but they're not the same object. Now we do have a way to check string equality, but before we do that, let's define a string and let's run our code and let's also save the test code we just did. So I'm pasting that in. So to compare strings, we can use string equal. So if we take this example here and ask if those strings are equal, you can see that that's true because it actually checks the string. This does pretty much what you would expect it to do. So these are not equal, but if I say string equal, the string I defined above and hello, that's true because again, it's checking that the strings are equal. And notice that it does take into consideration the case. And of course, if I pass in something that's not a string, I get an error because it's expecting a string here. So let me copy in the rest of those examples I typed below into my code window. And I'll run this just to make sure everything's good. And I actually already have that defined, so I don't need to double define it. And then this we need to comment out so that we don't get an error and the code executes the way we would expect. So the last equality check that we're going to be concerned with is going to be the equal predicate. And this is our all purpose equality checker. Just to demonstrate, let's copy some of the ones we did earlier here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the predicate we had above with the equal predicate. And did I accidentally have equal above? It actually looks like I did. That should be equal or just equal. And shouldn't have the equal sign there. So if I run this, you can see that we have true, false, true, 
false, true and true. Again, notice here we're actually looking into the cutter this time. And I don't think we actually ran that example that I accidentally copied and pasted that without running it. But again, this fails for equal because again, those aren't the same. And then all of these are going to be equal just like they were equal above. So equal actually goes into the list and checks to see, hey, are these two things equal? It also works with pairs. And just to make sure that I give the same list here, I'm going to copy and paste it. So if I run this, you can see that these are all true things. And you'll notice no errors as well. Equal does a good job of accepting whatever you take and deciding, hey, are these the same type first? And then do they have the same value? So there is a slight performance hit potentially because here again, it's checking the types, whereas something like string equals is just assuming you're going to pass a string. And if you don't, it throws an error. So let's remove the parentheses inside of here. And then you notice that that's false because even though they have the same elements, the list themselves are not equivalent. So this is a brief overview of how equality works. Again, always pick the one that's best suited for your needs. In general, the equal predicate is going to work best. If you know you're going to be looking at a string or a numeric, then one of those equalities will check. And again, this one you really only want to use if you are sure you want to use it. So to review, the equal sign checks that two numbers are equal, but it gives you an error if you're comparing non-numeric values. The EQ predicate checks that two names refer to the same object. It does not check that the values are the same. It only checks that they're referring to the same object. And so depending on the implementation, you may have differences in how those work. You can think of that as being similar to the equality operator in Java, where you can have two objects that have the same value, but if it's two separate objects, then the equality operator fails in that case. And then finally, equal checks that two names refer to equivalent objects. Not the same object, but equivalent objects, objects that have the same value. And again, we're using objects here in the more general term, not in the object-oriented programming term. So this could be numbers, strings, symbols, lists, pairs, and so forth. And equal is what you would want to use for any pair of non-numeric values, although it also works for numbers. So it's very good if you just want to say, hey, look, I'm comparing two lists. I want to check to see that they both have the same car. Well, equal will work because if they're numbers, if they're symbols, if they're lists, any of those cases, equal will work. Okay, so again, equality is something that you want to think about how you're checking it because in some cases you're going to throw an error, in some cases you're going to return true or false, and it's important that you understand these so that you know which to use in which case.